Everyone wanna see what I've invested in for the last three months financially for my big data bowl team? You can follow the path of my team to this point. Kind of like a hard knocks, but for nerds. It results in Predator, which is the the notebook that they that they put out. They weren't just trolling all season. No, they literally did this. I sponsored this. I'm the team owner. I didn't do anything, but now I am going to do one thing. And that one thing I'm gonna do is read. And I am not going to be shy about giving my honest opinion on whether this is a finalist, an honorable mention, or neither. Predator is our project uh, focused on understanding the defender's tackling ability. It centers on pursuit path optimization, and we've developed three new metrics to showcase optimal pursuit uh, deviation, this is OPD, yards allowed over optimal, this is YOW, and then uh, context adjusted yards saved, Ks. Your first kiss begins with Ks. Our project takes inspiration from nature, drawing parallels between predator-prey interactions. Oh, Nice. Uh, tackling is the art of optimizing pursuit of, ball, of the ball carrier and then effectively executing a tackle, minimizing yards gained. Similar to the projects that we've seen already, right? We've seen projects that are looking at uh, pursuit, so whether or not you're actually uh, in a zone to make a tackle, whether or not you are running fast enough and generating momentum, generating force, generating jewels, generating tackle J, generating strain, whatever metric you want to use, generating some open field pursuit of a ball carrier, but also effectively executing the tackle, so minimizing yards game. So we saw that note before, uh, where uh, given first contact, how many additional yards are, are expected. Um, and so if you're able to minimize uh, yards gained, then uh, that's, uh, that's as good of a metric as you know your tackle rate, right? At the end of the day, less forward progress is better. Uh, so minimizing yards gain seems like a smart way to also estimate uh, uh, what, what's going on in the field of tackling. Uh, we divide tackling into these two skills and develop uh, separate models to look at each skill independently. Okay. Uh, then we develop an algorithm for pursuit path optimization uh, inspired by pursuit curves. I wonder what these curves are gonna be. Um, identifying the optimal path of a pursuer uh, I generally the optimal path the pursuer takes towards an evader, uh, which takes a unique approach, uh, allowing for player-specific speed variability. We use these models in addition to a, an expected yards model to develop a metric. Quantifying tackling ability, OPD, uh, uses a tackle pursuit model to quantify the difference in tackle opportunity probability between actual and expected, uh, actual and optimal path. So this is given the path, how close is a particular player on it? So this was similar to Sam's entry, right? Like, is a play player continuing on the optimal path? So they they create a metric, and they're saying how much is a player deviating from it. Yao uh, utilizes the optimal pursuit path and tackle execution model to quantify actual yards allowed to act to yards allowed under optimal pursuit. So if Oh, so it's optimal pursuit. Ah, so it's not optimal path for the runner. It's given the would-be tackler, they're pursuing a ball carrier. Are they pursuing them at the most on the most optimal path? If so, what's the expected yards gained if they stay on the optimal path? If they deviate, what's the expected yards gained given the deviation? that difference would be uh, yards saved. So that's Ks. Uh, compares yards gained versus counterfactual version had the tackle uh, been missed and adjusts based off, uh, adjust the value based off the context and player. Okay, so actual yards, and then if the tackle wasn't made, how many more yards? Interesting. 
We bundle this work into an application. Oh, and we could click on this. Uh, as a way of illustrating a practice tool that could be used to understand defender performance in a single game setting. So what they're trying to do is they have uh, multiple models looking at small components of all of this. A model that says, is a would-be tackler, are they running, are they running towards a ball carrier on their optimal path? So not is the ball carrier on their optimal path, is the tackler on their optimal path. Then estimate yards, expected yards gain given optimal path and deviation. And then when a tackle is made, how many yards would have been gained if the tackle wasn't made? Seems uh, very complex. For every model, it requires defense. Also, for every model, it requires uh, an introduction. So you have effectively three models that all require uh, an explanation of why and where it fits. Like, why, is the, why isn't this all one model? Why did we need three? So you don't have a lot of real estate to work with at this point. Like, most people are describing one model. Some people don't even have fucking models. You gotta go through model methodology, hyperparameter tuning, feature selection, feature engineering for three models. There's gonna be a lot of fucking holes if you don't do this right. Tackle pursuit. Okay, this model leverages player tracking data to predict the probability a given defender at a current frame successfully pursues the ball carrier and generates a tackle opportunity. For a downstream application, we need a model to work independent on independent frames of data and thus avoid lagged features and sequential models. In this realm, we found XGBoost classification provided us with the best performance with a relatively parsimonious model and interpretable feature set, the rich tracking data and engineered features over a thousand were reduced via backwards elimination to the 30, okay, to 34, okay. <laughs> I was like, how are we gonna explain a thousand features, y'all? Um, 34 of the most impactful features, further eliminations uh, began to degrade predictive performance. Model hyperparameters were optimized with Optuna framework uh, and set to max performance in testing when, mi while minimizing for overfit and training. See figure one for further context. Oh, figure one. So XGBoost model, uh, all of the frames and plays, Optuna, 34 features, and then here's some um, log loss train test splits. Okay. I guess I'm unsurprised that the people who watch my stream also use Optuna, since I use Optuna on the stream all the time. <laughs> tackle execution. Given tackle probability is so heavily influenced by the proximity of the defender to the ball carrier in a single model, we want to separate out Tackle execution from the ability to generate a tackle opportunity. Interesting. So this is the same thing we were talking about the last two notebooks, right? There's a function of tackling that is so heavily imprinted on distance. Being close to a ball carrier immediately says, like, you're the tackler. People are jumping from, like, the idea of pursuit into the idea of tackling without bridging the gap that they could be different. So I think this is a pretty smart way to go about it. Pursuit is different than tackling. Team used opportunity just so we wouldn't get chewed out on stream for grid searching. <laughs> if I saw some psych Hitler grid search in here, I'd be like, did anyone learn anything? In this case, up to the point of generating a tackle opportunity, so whether that's within one and a half yards or not, that's different from once you're in there, are you developing the tackle? I think that is a nice way to separate out the two the two skills. Pursuit being one, so can you get there? And takedown being the other, actual tackle execution. So this is a nice this is a nice response to to notebooks that aren't doing that. Any player credited with a tackle 
assists or miss tackle creates a tackle opportunity and this model looks at their likelihood of converting that opportunity for tackles we isolate a f the frame where a tackle occurred look half a second prior to that moment so half a second being five frames for miss tackles we approximate the point by selecting the frame with the minimum distance between ball carrier and the successful tackle and look a half second back as well so either you tackled or you were really close. Using these rows as observations, we generate a set of features focused on the defender and ball carrier in isolation. Uh, the features include uh, speed, <laughs> momentum, velocity, force, direction, and orientation as they were about to collide. So uh, given knowing that they are in proxy of each other, if they're going to intersect each other, would that result in a tackle? Okay. For tackle execution, we selected a Bayesian hierarchical model. We wanted both random and fixed effects to understand how the context of the tackle influence tackle probability, as well as attempting to capture play level variation that might represent tackling technique not captured easily in 2D spatial data. Additionally, we felt that the method would be more robust to the small sample size of tackle opportunities at a player level than traditional hierarchical models. We observed significant random effects um, indicating variation in player level tackling ability, figure one provides further detail. Uh, so here, the execution model, uh, about 15,000 frames. So not a ton of data for the execution model. I mean, we're talking about hundreds of thousands in the pursuit model. The execution model, because you're looking at only five frames per possible collision, uh, you only have a very limited amount of frames to train a model and although 15,000 frames is probably not bad it's definitely nowhere near you know an entire magnitude larger than this which is what you have in the other model again it's probably the reason why a lot of people are just going with a pursuit based model and saying well this implies tackling in this case we're not making that assumption the execution model says whether or not you do it. The pursuit model says whether or not you have the opportunity to do it, which I think is correct. The issue with this is small sample size. How good is this? The mean of tackle when it was real is 91. The mean of tackle when it wasn't is 62. The base rate of 87% uh, when there was a tackle. Uh, and that kind of makes sense, right? Like, you're in the area, if you're tackling, the average in general should be pretty high because you're fucking really close to the person already. And we're not we're only looking half a second before. Uh, however, uh, when a tackle doesn't happen, since you're in such close close proximity, we should still see a difference in our guess. And we do. So 91% being, yeah, that player did tackle. 62% really good for when a tackle's not happening. So uh, there is separation in signal, and I think that's very strong. This does suggest, especially towards other notebooks, right? Notebooks who assume that pursuit ends up being a tackle. This suggests that that's not the case. You can get even more finer grain than that. And the expected yards model. Uh, this model replicates methodology from the 2019 paper going deep. Now let's take a look at the... Going deep paper. Oh yeah, so deep, bro. Our implementation uses XGBoost in favor of uh, LSTM. Uh, probably because who the fuck wants to train a neural net these days? Based on comparable results uh, and our need to alter XY data at certain frames in our interactive application, as well as the uh, the K's metric. Okay, so then we see this. Ball information table looks familiar and pretty. Nice. See, see ghetto Bob? The model, the, the table looks pretty. Uh, defender pursuit path, opt okay, so, so these are the three different models. Okay, so now, next section, defender pursuit path optimization. Defender pursuit, defender path optimization is key in elevating our model predictions into better understanding of a defender. Okay, so they create these models they're creating these models in order to assess behavior, 
aspects of the game. So they're not creating these models and saying, the models are there, the end. They're saying these are where the models end up being applied, right? The model itself isn't the entry, it's the application of the metrics of the model, right? Uh, defender path optimization is key in elevating our model predictions to better understanding of defender's pursuit ability. A defender that generated a tackle pro opportunity probability of 0.1 could have performed close to optimal or could have generated a much higher probability. Therefore, we attempt to s simulate optimal pursuit curves to better understand this question. We compute these paths for every run play and all pass plays. Couldn't you just say for all plays? Oh, uh, uh, all pass plays of greater than three yards after carry, after after uh, catch. Okay. Um, since we are focused on tackle pursuit and not coverage ability, uh, though we compute these paths for every player, we kept only the top three in terms of shortest time to ball carrier for this amount. Though we compute these paths for every player, we... Okay, I see. Because you have it for everyone, but the shortest distance is the ones that we care about. Because they're the highest likelihood based off tackle pro... Okay, so, so this is a smart thing to do, is when you have models, those models don't have to be the end of the project. Those models can illuminate your analysis elsewhere. Right? And in this case, that's what their models are doing. Their models are filtering certain plays or certain situations. And so given those certain situations, what's the behavior that's happening in these situations? This is a nice way to say, like, again, the computation of some value isn't just... The, that's not the only way to think about tackling. Like, you don't have to invent uh, an intermittent or a uh, in-between, a frame-by-frame or a play level type metric to evaluate tackling better, you could have a metric that it does that, that you use as an intermediate step towards another metric, right? This bridges you to something more communicable. Okay, let's see if that's what happens. Okay, speed curves. This looks familiar. We realize we need to define a player-specific speed curve. This curve defines the speed at which a player can move at each tenth of a second. This allows us to ultra speed in a more realistic manner in our path, uh, path optimization versus relying on observed speeds in the data. Uh, these curves were developed using NFL read R, 40-yard uh, dash times, along with setting uh, parameters around 10-yard split uh, and 20-yard split. Then downweighting all max speeds by two yards per second. We downweight to calibrate the to NFL next gen stats in top uh, top in speed games, ensuring speeds are more realistic to in game settings. Figure two uh, will illustrate. Now we develop a speed curve for every player to use as their speed in path optimization. We start uh, a player based off their in game speed at the time of the catch or handoff and move the player up the speed curve, up and down the speed curve, uh, up the speed curve with each successive one-tenth second until max speed is reached. We use this because we want to estimate the optimal path in quickest time to ball care, but within the constraints of a player. Oh, I see, okay. So optimal path also requires optimal speed. That's why it's important to estimate optimal speed but given the context of not just the behavior but also what they've done in non-game situations such as their uh 40 yard dash times so their speeds at when they are at their fastest what is the fastest they could be uh while pursuing so given their fastest speed perhaps we can estimate their path better because the faster you are maybe the sharper a path you take to the ball carrier right the slower you are the less steep of a of a pursuit you would you would take right again um this example is a great example of speed-based pursuit at this point in time only one player jamal adams is still headed towards the ball carrier uh, with some uh, 
acceleration, some speed uh, greater than 15 miles an hour, uh, whereas the ball carrier is headed towards him and has been headed towards him at 17 miles an hour plus, reaching uh, 20 miles an hour uh, pretty soon after this. So notice how as they approach, um, the, the speed, if, say, Jamal Adams was as fast as Javante Williams, he might have uh, continued to match this match this angle in the most optimal path. But instead, because his speed perhaps could not take this path, he might have a more optimal path peeling away. Right, so his more optimal path perhaps is to angle so Javante Williams won't gain any more yards in a more conservative fashion. Right, so at this point, Javante Williams traveling 18 miles an hour, Jamal Adams traveling 15 miles an hour, he is going to outpace him to the corner as. Javante Williams turns the corner, so does Jamal Adams. And so now, speed is going in uh, the same direction. So this is the idea of, this is the reason why speed is important in optimal pursuit. If you are running at optimal speed, then you have a different path. If you are not running at optimal speed, then that path isn't, isn't the same as if you are running at top speed. Okay, interesting. Okay, ooh. Wait, this is, what, this is literally what just happened. We literally just saw this. This is what happens on this play. That's literally what happens. Like, this velocity versus this velocity. You get this pursuit. Pursuit curves. Uh, these curves can be uh, applied to a variety of applications like predator-prey interaction and missile guidance systems, to name a few. Pursuit curves, okay. Uh, we wanted to explore pursuit curves as an alternative uh, alternative to our, uh, to our other path optimization algorithms of previous Big data bowls. Um, oh, this is Robin's group. Ah, uh, what a great notebook. One of my favorites. Because unlike a ball carrier trying to evade and move through obstacles towards a static target, the end zone, tackling involves a defender pursuing a moving object. There's also prior research on non-tracking football data that suggests optimal tackling strategy uh, follows a similar pattern to these pursuit curves. Figure three illustrates a classic pursuit curve and one of the pursuit curves uh, we estimate with player tracking along that uh, trajectory seen in gray. So here's what ideal pursuit should look like and here's pursuit uh, if gray, gray being ideal. So that's interesting. So yellow, gray is ideal. This would be the ideal pursuit. Yellow is actually what ended up happening. Oh, that's very neat. Right? Okay. Uh, given some unique aspects of our particular application, like variable player speeds, potential blockers, etc., we opted to develop a set of functions that approximate uh, pursuit curves by iteratively moving the defender towards the ball carrier in a way that minimizes distance while living within our set of constraints. The benefit of this approach are twofold. The benefits are twofold. Computationally, it was less intensive while iterating over all plays and defenders. Uh, from a practical standpoint, it gave us more op options to parameterize the problem and allow for future, ed uh, an allow for, for future analyst fine tuning, for ex instance, Speed curves could further be modified for additional contexts like weather, player fatigue, or even to swap players of different speeds. A faster player may have an optimal path that saves additional yardage. 
Wait, but this is twofold. Computationally, it was less intensive. Oh, computationally, it's less intense. And from a practicality standpoint, uh, it allows to uh, be open to new context, new features. Okay, and then this is how it works. Algorithm starts on the frame when the ball carrier receives the football, it uses the defender's initial direction, speed, x, y coordinates at a point in time. Uh, defender speed at that point in time is matched to the closest speed on their speed curve. That is the starting point and the algorithm will increment up one tenth of a second until max speed is reached. So this is the speed curve stuff that they were talking about. Um, then the defender is allowed to move about 90 degrees in either direction from current direction, but it won't select a path that would pass through a blocker's exclusion zone set at half a radius. So a blocker, ex okay, so if there's a blocker who's in half a yard, those angles are denied, okay? However, a move of 45 to 75 degrees penalizes all subsequent speeds by 3% and moves of 75 to 95 uh, uh, 75 to 90 percent and another three percent this is to simulate speed loss during directional change okay cool i like that the algorithm is iterative meaning the ball carrier moves first and the defender will react to the move okay so as one moves the next one grows one moves one doesn't exist yet the defender moves in a way that minimizes the distance between the ball carrier's new location plus their uh, location on the next frame to simulate slight anticipation of where the ball carrier is headed. Uh, this process continues each tenth of a second until a defender gets within 0.8 yards of the ball carrier, at which point we consider a tackle opportunity generated. So less than a yard equals a tackle opportunity, but we're not implying tackle, we're just saying they're in the zone to tackle. If a defender doesn't do this before the end of the actual play, we consider them to have no, to having no optimal path to the ball carrier. Okay, cool. I like that. Um, so they use, um, they use speed, they use uh, tackle pursuit, they use a lot of this shit in order to calculate like how close they are and also the speed and also the optimal path. So this is now a set of models that can be used to create these new context metrics. Uh, okay, so pursuit metric. Optimal pursuit deviation. This is the, the, the first stuff we were talking about before. Uh, this uses the defender path um, optimization and tackle pursuit model to identify the difference in probability for a tackle opportunity when the optimal path intercepts the ball carrier compared to the probability of the defender at the same point in time during the actual play, a higher OPD indicates that a player is being rather inefficient about generating a tackle opportunity, while lower OPD indicates near optimal uh, pursuit of uh, the ball carrier. So remember, uh, in pursuit, think about, like, think about it like loss. The more you deviate, the greater the loss you incur. So if you have no loss, then your uh, pursuit deviation is zero. Uh, so you stayed optimal. So the closer you are to zero, the less you deviate, the better. Okay. Uh, and we know what these pursuit paths look like. Yards allowed over optimal. This really could have been like, okay, I'm not going to think of an I word to fit into this. That is, it is degen hours though. Yao takes uh, then takes the location of the optimal interception and identifies the yard line the defender could have generated a tackle opportunity. This gets constrained with, uh, uh, this gets contrasted with the play result and gets weighted by tackle execution models likelihood of success. We compute this value for all players uh, at a player level, but can look at a, we can look at play team level by averaging the results of uh, two quickest optimal pass, a play, uh, in which yards allowed over optimal is low indicates the defense was relatively efficient at pursuing the ball carrier. Okay, and so we have this. Oh my god.
Okay. This is the ball carrier. Uh, and then... I'm guessing this red line is estimated yards. Um... Illustration of Sam Howard doing an optimal job limiting yards. Is 57 Sam Hubbard in this case? 94. 94 is the tackler. Interesting. I don't know what the yellow line means. Is that line of scrimmage and the white line is yards gained? Uh, less, slightly less optimal path of Tyreek Hill yielding higher OPD and Yao. Gray circles optimal. Oh, ah, like this. I see. So 94 and 94 are basically on top of each other. But you can see that there's a little yellow under this gray. So he he pursued at very optimal. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's see here. So here's yellow and here's the gray. Gray. Ah, so there was a more optimal path that may have saved more yards. Oh, and you can see other optimal paths too, right? Yeah, you can see these other optimal paths from these other defenders. Right? Like all three of these defenders drop gray dots. Uh, so you see 57 and 24 drop these two. Right, so there were like, essentially like five to seven more yards they could have saved. Um, execution metrics. Uh, using our tackle execution model uh, and our expected yards model, we compute Ks by considering our counterfactual scenario in which tackles, in which the tackle was missed. Ks is computed by looking at tackles and subtracting the actual yards gained from the counterfactual where a player misses the tackle. To compute counterfactual, we utilize uh, the frame, the half second prior to the tackle event uh, and move x, y coordinates of the tackle to be five yards behind the ball carrier and set their speed to one yard per second to simulate a missed tackle. I suppose I'd be curious as to the alternative to this. Presented with no alternatives, I will accept you at truth. The context adjustment is done uh, with the tackle execution models, tackle probability multiplied by yards saved. This is similar to expected value calculation, where we want to minimize maximum likelihood of the event and have high payoff. A tackler putting themselves in a good position to generate high tackle probability will get credited with high Ks, then one may have put themselves in a low probability situation related to the ball here. Uh, this modifier typically ranges from 0.6 to 1 and varies both uh, on context and player. I think this is similar to an outfielder in baseball. Oh, baseball. I know that. Uh, that makes an outstanding diving catch. It may look spectacular, but it also may have been due to a player's poor decision making, turning a routine catch into something more difficult. This happens all the time. A lot of people think like these insane, spectacular catches are like, oh wow, what an incredible player. What a raw feat of athleticism. But it's perhaps their initial read that, uh, that doesn't allow them to take an efficient first step. Being a step behind in a situation that only lasts a couple seconds may be the difference between an out and not. 
the fact that you can accelerate so quickly in order to get to the ball, although spectacular, your catch probability at ball contact might have been very high. You taking one step back may, might have dropped it. Your speed and ability to run towards the ball after that bad step may bring it back to a high catch probability again. So this is an interesting way to think about it. The idea that someone can make it a fantastic tackle is also dependent on whether or not they were in a position to do that in the first place. So if they were already in a position to make a fantastic, to make a routine tackle and it ends up looking really good or had a higher conversion rate because it was a low probability of a success, is that because they moved unoptimally? Again, this is a nice way to cut tackling as a behavior away from the pursuit, which is a different behavior. Uh, both at the same time is very important um, because it isn't one leads to the other. One is one, and the other is its own skill as well. Um, okay, here's Bobby Okariki. Okay, here's a handoff. The grays are all pursuits. And so in, so it seems in general this is like... Okay, and the tackle is in yellow, so... So red being estimated yards. He gets into the zone and then tackles. So this is if the tackle was missed. Right? If the tackle's missed, this is how many yards he has to gain. And then ultimately, yellow, I'm guessing, is where the play ends. So in this case, you probably want to be within, like, once you get into this zone, where is the line? And then are you beating that? Okay, I get it. Illustrated for a single play. Um, this five-year difference is yards allowed over optimal. Uh, the red line indicates K's on this play would be 3.5 had Jesse Bates missed the tackle. Uh, at the point of catch, the optimal path and the actual path will start to deviate uh, for Jesse Bates. Following the optimal pursuit curve, Jesse Bates would intercept uh, Hill, 2.2 seconds into play. The difference in the pursuit probability at this time is how we calculate optimal path. Okay, so this difference of five yards is the Yao. The Ks is an extra three and a half. Had he missed. And then optimal pursuit would suggest perhaps even more saving. Okay, so, and this is a really nice sum, right? Um, you can have a poor pursuit and save yards still, and you're seen as good, right? But it's possible that you could, your good could be better if you performed optimally. That's good. It's very clear. To validate our metrics, we looked at whether OPD was a repeatable skill and if Yao correlated well with other metrics of defense. Defense success. Uh, figure nine highlights uh, OPD uh, seems to be moderately repeatable skill with a 0 0.41 correlation between weeks one through six and weeks seven through nine. That said, play level context matters. As a defensive unit, teams that pursued optimally and limited Yao correlate strongly with teams that limited offensive success rate of their opponent. Interesting. And also good. Uh, correlation between, so this is week over week, or week, window over window, so I always say some correlation of predictability suggests this is a skill, and this is something you could predict for, that's always good. Uh, we saw that with Sam's paper, uh, Sam, uh, the, the high school Sam's paper. And so here, we see that teams, uh, uh, as Yao 
increases, or as Yao decreases, uh, opponent offensive success rate, so this is like their ability to, I guess, be successful. I don't know. That success rate is a metric somewhere. I hear about it all the time. I always thought it was more in term, related to like pass completion or something, but low success rate, high Yao. Low, low success rate, low Yao. Bad defenses, high success rate, and high Yao. And this is 2022. Uh, so the Niners, a good Cowboys, bad Texans who pick like in the top like one or two, bad Lions defense, bad Arizona defense. Okay, I see. Interesting. Uh, to illustrate our work, we put a single game into a shiny app called Predator. Oh, yes. I forgot that this app exists. There is an app that allows user, a user to review a play and player level result uh, and to explore their own counterfactual question within a play, uh, within a play uh, utilizing a drag and drop interactive tool that computes expected yards and tackle probability. Oh, interesting, look. Okay, if we stop. And I take a, oh shit, I can. Oh, all right, hold on, hold on. Okay, start, stop, play. Okay, so that's the play. Uh, and we could scrub. Okay, so this play, this is the tackler. Okay. Um, so at this point, 25 uh, has a tackle probability of 0.97. Okay, if we move him, score. Ah, expected yards, new expected yards. Okay, what if we move him closer? Ah, 19 to 25. Oh, okay, what if we move him over here? Oh, zero. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, what if we put him right next to him? Ah, oh, 61%, dude. Oh, that's neat. Scuttlebutt kept this part completely hidden. Okay, what if we put, like, a bunch of people next to him? Oh, look. All of their probabilities went up. Okay, what happens if I play it from here? Oh, it just resets. Okay. Which makes sense. We did not integrate path optimization application uh, for performance reasons, exactly. Uh, but hopefully this illustrates the potential useful tool that can be uh, developed with our work and lets a user explore in-game scenarios and how tackle probably might have been altered due to different positioning and decision-making. If football is a game of inches, then every inch and every yard saved matters. Uh, the goal of tackling is to minimize yards gained. And to do that, a defender needs to be good in both the pursuit and the execution of tackle. We believe our work is valuable. It's a valuable contribution by proposing pursuit curves as an alternative uh, for path optimization and by delineating between the two different components of tackling to measure those skills relative to either an optimal or counterfactual scenario in the context of yards gained or lost. This is insanely good. I am uh, thoroughly impressed. And I'm not just saying that as a team owner. This is like very clear to me. Somehow they were able to describe six models, like three models, speed curves, pursuit, 
And then optimal pursuit deviation and yards allowed over optimal. So seven things, seven models, plus an app. So that's extremely impressive uh, that they were able to do all of this. Let's, let's, let's check. Let's do the check. Um, That's insane. This does not feel like 2,000 words. This feels like 5,000 words. Again, I had nothing to do with this other than put the team together. I was hoping to poke as many holes as possible. And it got close a few times, but every time I was about to, there was like a pretty good explanation. I'm not sold on pursuit curves though. Seems ad hoc and not physical. Well, by nature, it has to be because it's reactive, right? Like whatever the offense does, the defender has to respond to that, right? Because the ball carrier has all the power. Uh, so the defender has to be reactive to the ball carrier. So if that is what you mean by ad hoc, then yeah, I agree because the nature of it has to be. I don't doubt that the the research behind pursuit curves which seems well studied especially if it was stuff from the 1700s i wouldn't assume i i wouldn't i personally would feel out of my element challenging something like that if pursuit models have been around for a really long time and these are the op behavior of pursuit then me as not a, a behavioral econ a behavioral economist pursuit modeler I don't really have grounds to stand on where the alternative or the null in this case is ideal pursuit is no different than actual pursuit uh, because ideal pursuit takes into account speed which is the one player factor that uh, they can estimate and calculate. And so that's what's happening here, is given uh, their potential for speed, what would be the optimal pursuit? And so I think that's all fine, personally. I, I do question, like, particularly in, what was it? This, no, one of these examples, this one? I question, like, this pursuit here suggests he may have been able to save, like, the, ta the actual tackler in this case, yellow, may have been able to save a few yards maybe one or two but his the trade-off of optimality and what actually happens for yellow in this case isn't different however that doesn't discount the fact that two other defenders had more optimal pursuits right and the fact that 30 the actual tackler at the end of the day also had an alternative pursuit path, an optimal pursuit path, suggests that maybe pursuit is working at scale as expected. So whether you believe it's not physical, which I don't know really what that means since they're using speed as uh, the feature for pursuit, um, I... I tend to assume that, as this echoes previous research, that this is probably more right than it is wrong, right? Just seems ad hoc, minus three velocity if has to turn over 75 degrees. Um, yeah, so I would say perhaps 
the argument here could have been researched further, but this is less of an argument of this is less of an argument of pursuit, and this is more of an argument of just domain interpretation of expected behavior. But their argument here is to simulate speed lost during directional change. So given a pivot, you aren't continuing with given a pivot in a different direction at a frame, you aren't, you do have a speed trade-off, right? Like as your momentum is going one way, in order to go a different direction immediately, it requires uh, a deceleration in one vector and acceleration in another vector. Whether that's 3% or more or less, I think does require research. But whether that is, whether that, whether that breaks it for me, I don't think it does. I don't think that makes it any, I don't, I don't think that's where the, I don't think the argument falls apart because of that piece. Right. I don't think, I don't think the argument falls apart because they believe that speed decreases at at a uh, angle change but um because it's real like that actually happens whether it is over or understated i don't know so i agree with you there like whether that's just assumed or not i don't know but i don't think it breaks it so I don't think me being sold on pursuit curves requires this to be more grounded in research. Rather, it's the opposite. I think it's very well grounded in research, and I think this piece acknowledges uh, even more context where speed doesn't change immediately. Rather, speed is a gradual change given the direction and directional change. Um, so good, good. Could it be great? Yes. Could it, does the difference between good and great improve the entire project? For this piece alone, uh, I would say no. I don't think I lose the context of this entire, of this entire app or the system of models and equations that get me to this. Like, here, and I move this guy here, and I recalculate, and it says, the ball carrier is giving me two extra yards because of the metrics that were presented here. I don't think I'm... I think this is just very clear. Like, yeah, we are acknowledging that distance is the number one factor in tackling still. We also acknowledge that pursuit is its own factor. And this is perhaps the best framework for pursuit that I've seen this year. Um, and again, acknowledging that pursuit doesn't equal tackling. Pursuit equals pursuit. The fact that there was a component just to cover tackling is extremely interesting on its own. Um, so yeah, I, I think the biggest thing here is pursuit. The fact that pursuit was so well done. Um, could it be better? Probably. Most likely. But is this the best pursuit evidence so far? I think yes. I don't think, I think a lot of people are going to make I think a lot of people are going to assume pursuit implies tackle, which is completely fine. We've seen that that is mostly true. The faster you are going and the closer you are, the more likely you're going to tackle the player. Uh, and I think most people are going to do that. I think this gets ahead by saying, if we assume that doesn't happen every time, 
what actually happens, the investigation on both sides was pretty good. I'd say very complete. Um, all right. Do I think this is a finalist notebook? This is really good. I don't think this is any lower than an honorable mention. See, one thing that's hard is you can't conflate effort with quality, right? You can't conflate, oh, they did seven models in a shiny app. Like, you can't conflate those things with finalist notebook because there's going to be finalist notebooks that do far less than that and are going to be finalists. Uh, their quality is elsewhere. Do I think the quality here is deserving of finalists regardless, irrespective of the amount of work put in? I think yes. Pursuit, as defined here, is going to set this one apart. The full suite of pursuit, tackle, using the metrics to explain the behavior, and then summing it into an app, I think all of that is extremely good. I think logically everything followed into each other. Um, I think it was going to be extremely hard to deny this one outside of the top 10.